Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Miriam Rodriguez, and I am the Coalition Relations Coordinator with the United States Breastfeeding Committee. Each year, the USBC hosts the National Breastfeeding Conference and Convening, bringing together supporters from diverse sectors, including representatives from local, cultural, tribal, state, and territorial, as well as national and federal organizations. This presentation will do a deep dive into the COFFER proposals and offer some tips on how to write a strong proposal for the annual convening. Just a quick disclaimer before we dive in. The information provided in this presentation is purely informational. It does not guarantee that your session will be accepted. We want to remind you all that multiple factors influence the selection of the educational programming to ensure both a balanced and compelling program. After viewing this presentation, you will be able to explain the call for proposal process for the NBCC, describe the suggested proposal structure, describe the components of the scoring rubric, and you will be able to list the resources that are available to all proposal authors. The call for proposal process generally has six phase phases, submission, review, recommendation, final decision, speaker acceptance, and finally, session slotting. We'll walk through these phases today. And let's jump into the submission phase. Each year, the conference program committee develops the conference theme, sets content priorities, referred to as the learning arcs, and constructs asso associated learning objectives. To learn more about this year's content priorities, please visit the call for proposal landing page on the USBC website. The conference program committee generally accepts proposal submissions for the following formats. Breakout panels are sessions that have similar presentations grouped together to form a panel. Presenters will have an opportunity to share model practices, programs, lessons learned, and so on related to the conference tracks. These presentations allow a maximum of two presenters and are typically 20 to 30 minutes in length. Posters are visual representations of research, model practices, and or programs. Maximum of one presenter. And for our fully online conferences, poster presentations are pre-recorded and these recordings should be no longer than five minutes in length. Roundtable discussions are facilitated discussions or interactive presentation sessions around hot topics in the first food field. This is a chance to have organic, topically relevant, peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences at the conference. This type of session allows for one facilitator and typically runs 20 to 30 minutes. Now, whether you choose to submit for a breakout panel, poster, or roundtable, your, your proposal should address important relevant questions in the first food field. It should increase the knowledge and skills of stakeholders in the field and promote and inspire the development of advocates. And of course, it should showcase you and your organization's innovation. Please remember that this conference does not focus on clinical topics. Something like fixing tongue ties would not be relevant in the context of this conference. After you have assured your topics align with the conference theme, you have chosen your learning arc, and you have aligned your proposed presentation with one or more of the associated conference objectives, here, are, um, here is a suggested outline for your proposal description. Begin with an introduction. This should be about five, three to five sentences addressing why the study or program was performed or implemented and what unsolved problems you are addressing. Next, you should be able to describe your methods. In about four to six sentences, tell us how you address this problem. What tools you use to address the problem that you outlined in your introduction. Lastly, tell us about the outcomes. In the next three to five sentences, share the data, analysis, and or impact of your project. Please remember to include what the participants will gain from your session. Some questions to consider are, why is this presentation relevant? Is there an educational gap this presentation will address? And what are the presentation's objectives? 
Once you've formed your session description, navigate to the call for proposals landing page on the USBC website and submit. And be sure to submit by the deadline. This can also be found on the call for proposals landing page. Now let's talk about the next three phases in the process. Review, recommendation, and making the final decisions. After the deadline, the conference program committee will begin to review all of the submissions. Each proposal will be reviewed by at least three reviewers and the final scores will then be averaged. The proposal rubric, which is available to everyone, outlines how each submission will be reviewed and scored. Here are a couple things to consider re when reviewing these components for your presentation. Session title. How well does the title describe the session? Is it concise and informative? Session description. How developed is the session description? Does it capture the reader's interest? Learning arc alignment. How well does your session align with the learning arc you've selected? How well has your session description articulated the connection to this learning arc? Conference objective alignment. Each learning arc has associated conference objectives. How well does your session align with those objectives? How well does your session description demonstrate how those objectives will be met? Diversity and equity. Does the proposed presentation align with the diversity and equity principles? How does the work being presented include perspectives of individuals from underrepresented groups and tackle the root causes of disparities? Inclusion. Does this presentation description clearly explain how the content of the presentation is relevant to the population being served? Was this population invited into the process, activities, decision, or policymaking in a way that shares power and ensures equal access to opportunities and resources? Participant engagement. How will the proposed presentation engage the attendees in active participation. Session format and participant outcomes. Are the participant outcomes stated and are they achievable in the session format you've selected? Overall proposal clarity. Finally, reviewers will reflect on the overall clarity of the proposal. How well is the proposal organized? Are all of the components on the rubric clearly defined? As I previously mentioned, each submission will be reviewed at least three times. The final scores will then be averaged and this will inform the final selections. There are a number of reasons why a proposal could be declined. The most frequent reasons are if the proposal is not in line with the conference theme or objectives, if the proposal is confusing or very limited in scope, if the proposal has low interest rating or um, is not applicable to a broad audience appeal. And lastly, if the proposal deadline submission was not met. Writing a proposal takes effort. At the end of the process, when you're ready to submit, you may be too close to it or too worn out to see if everything lines up. We encourage you to take a step back and get some feedback from someone in your network. Having a second set of eyes can truly make a difference. Please do not wait until the last minute. Give yourself and any co-authors ample time to complete all the elements of your submission, as well as time to get that feedback. We want to make sure that you have all of the tools you need to write a strong proposal. There are a number of resources available to proposal authors, including this recording, the proposal rubric, and a tutorial on how to navigate through the proposal system. We encourage you to take advantage of all of these resources before submitting your proposal. Okay, now let's talk about the next two phases of the process, speaker acceptance and slotting of the sessions. If your proposed session is selected to be part of the conference program, please keep in mind your presenter to do's. The conference web pages will be updated with presenter deadlines to help you keep track of the next steps. You will first need to accept the invitation to present. You will also need to make sure you are registered for this conference. This includes a registration fee. Due to budgetary constraints, 
it is not possible to offer subsidies or waivers of the registration fees to presenters at this time. We will also be applying for continuing education for the conference. Panel presenters will need to provide bio disclosures, resumes and CVs, photos, bios, and post-test questions for their presentation. Deadlines for these items will be communicated to you. Session slotting typically occurs after we have received notice on whether presenters have accepted or declined the invitation to present. You will be notified of the conference program schedule as soon as it is finalized. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. We hope this information has been helpful. Please feel free to watch the recording as often as you'd like. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact us at conference at usbreastfeeding.org. Thank you, and we look forward to reading your proposals.